We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Welcome and thanks for joining us for an Adobe Pro Tips for Students lesson by Dr. Tim Kitchen and Abigail Nelson. Hi folks, welcome to this Adobe Pro Tips for Students session focusing on the video editing application, Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, Abby. Hi, Tim. Note that this is the first of two parts on Adobe's main video editing application, that is Premiere Pro. Did you know that Premiere Pro is used at the highest level of the film, TV and multimedia industries? Marvel Studios and other top production companies use Adobe Premiere Pro for many of their productions. Australian TV networks use Adobe Premiere Pro and schools all over the world have the same access to Premiere Pro, which is the very same software they use at the highest levels. That's one of the great things about learning Adobe's Pro tools while you're still at school. Students are learning skills and techniques that they can apply into further education or into the workforce. And Dr. Tim is about to start the first of a two-part tutorial session to go through the basics of video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro. He will go through the following techniques. File management, creating, saving, and locating a new project, setting up and understanding the workspace, importing assets, new sequence, basic editing, adding motion graphics templates, adding titles, transitions, adding and managing audio, and of course, exporting. Over to you, Dr. Tim. All right, just before we jump into Adobe Premiere Pro, I've got some assets that you might like to download so that you can work with me and we can build something together. Let me just bring up a link. This link is adobe.ly slash video dash editing dash assets 23. And you'll find all the, uh, the audio files, the images, uh, the video files that I'll be using to produce this particular clip in Premiere Pro will be available through that Google Drive. So just download each individual asset and then I'll show you how to file manage them and then we can use them to start building a project. The project we're gonna be doing is creating a little stinger. And uh, I'll give you an example of what the stinger is gonna look like. We've got this at the Adobe Education Summit coming up very soon, and I'm getting lots of these little stingers made by students all over Australia uh, for the summit. Uh, here's an example of one of them. Hi everyone, my name is Frank from Adobe Express, encouraging you to check out the new Animate From Audio Quick Action. I hope you're really enjoying the 2023 ANZ Adobe Education Summit. I'm gonna share my screen. And what you can see here, I'm working with a Mac, but it's very similar on a Windows machine as well, is I've got my Finder and I've already managed those assets into three different folders. File management is a really important part of video production when it comes to working with Adobe Premiere Pro. I've downloaded all those assets from that link that I gave you earlier, and I've put them into three folders that are used by video editors all the time. Just about every video editor uses a similar process in terms of managing their files. There's gonna be a project folder, and I've called it Summit Stinger. And in that project folder, I've got three subfolders. I've got my audio subfolder, my footage subfolder, and my stills subfolder. And inside those folders, I've added the audio file, the footage, and the stills that I'm gonna be using to build this particular project. Once you've got your files all sorted, you can certainly add more later on, but if you start moving those files around into other folders or other parts of your hard drive, you're gonna have issues with Premiere Pro. It's gonna be disconnecting from your actual project. So file management's really important to do at the start. You can always add more, but don't take them away or move them around after you've got them in there. Right, let's jump into Premiere Pro. I've opened up Premiere Pro and at the top left-hand corner, you can see some important buttons. There's the new project button. There's the open project button. There's the home, there's the learn. That's a really key one. If you wanna learn more about Premiere Pro, that learn button will take you to the Adobe Help Center. 
where you can find out more. Abby's going to tell you a bit more about that a little bit later. Now I want to start a new project. So I'm going to click on new project and it's going to bring up a window that looks like this. What's important here is the top left hand corner where it says project name and I'm going to give it a name to start with. I'm going to call it Summit Stinger 1. Then we're looking for a project location and this will be the project folder that you created earlier. So I'm going to click the little drop down arrow and go to choose location so I can go and find where I've saved all of those assets in my project folder called Summit Stingers. And there's my footage and my audio and my stills. But this particular project, I'm just going to be saving outside the subfolders, but inside, inside the main project folder. By clicking choose, that will then happen. So I'm in the correct directory. I've given it a title and now I'm ready to start creating. I'm going to click the create button down the bottom right hand corner. Look, there are ways of then going in and selecting all your assets and it'll come in. I think it's easier to, to manage them through a file management process from the start and doing it this way than getting confused about adding your assets um, right at the very start of your project. So I'm, I've got my project name, I've got my project location. I'm going to click the create button. This environment as we mentioned earlier, is exactly the same environment that's used to make Hollywood blockbuster films and just about anything on Netflix now is made with an environment similar to this. If it's not Premiere Pro, it might be another tool like Avid. They also have a similar workflow. So as you're learning Premiere Pro, you're actually learning the professional workflow to create movies, television, commercials. It is very professional. We've got uh, a number of different windows this window here is called your source monitor. This one's called your project monitor. Down the bottom left hand corner is your uh, assets or your project assets window. Next to it is a, a thin window called the uh, tools. And then your timeline where you build the video will appear in this window. And on the right hand side is an audio level meter. Sometimes you might find that your windows start going a bit skewy if you might accidentally reorganize it um, or on purpose you might do it because you want to emphasize one particular window over another. If that ever happens and then you want to quickly get it back to what it was, I'm going to recommend you do this. First of all, notice that by default we are in editing mode. And if the, the editing assembly color effects, if those tabs haven't appeared, look for this little little tool here. And this will hopefully allow you to um, bring in the different workspaces. Editing is what you use 90% of the time, even 95% of the time. And that's where I am at the moment. Occasionally you'll jump into the color one, occasionally you'll jump into an effects one, but uh, editing is where you should be most of the time. If the windows have all been reorientated, we can go up to the window workspaces. Notice we're in editing mode reset to saved layout. And as soon as I click that, all the windows then go back to where they should be. Let's go through the process now of importing those assets that you downloaded earlier. Down the bottom left hand corner, it actually says import media to start. If you do a right click in there, you can go to the import button and then go hunting for those folders that you created earlier. So I've got my footage, audio and stills. Now if you're working with a Mac, it's as simple as selecting all. Maybe hold the shift key down so you can select all of those folders and then click import and they will all come in. If you're working with a Windows machine, that doesn't always work. So what you might have to do with a Windows machine is do a right click and import. And then when you find each individual folder, you can click on the folder and there should be a little button in the Windows machine that says import folder and that'll bring in the whole folder and everything as well that's in the folder. So that's the other way of doing it, one folder at a time with most Windows setups. 
Uh, have a go though, and it might just work for you. I have noticed in the new version of Premiere Pro, it'll it'll bring across, if you've got more than one asset in each folder, it'll bring them all across beautifully. But because I've only got one asset in my audio folder, I suspect it'll bring across the asset, the audio file, but not the folder. Let's see what happens. I click import. Yeah, I'm right. My poor audio file has been left without a folder. It's worth noting that we don't call them folders now that they're in in uh, Premiere Pro, we actually call them bins. It comes from the old Hollywood terminology of the, the footage is in the can, it's in the bin, it's unprocessed, it's ready to be processed. I'm gonna create a new bin by doing a right click and then going to new bin and I'm gonna call it audio. And there's my audio folder and I'm just gonna move that audio file into that audio folder. You might find that it's looking more like an icon view when you first do it. That's okay. It's hard to manage though in icon view. I highly recommend you change it from icon view to list view down the bottom left hand corner. And that becomes a much more manageable process with all your different assets. And of course, if you're going to add more assets, you can add them to your project folder and then just keep importing them one at a time just to make sure they go into the correct bin at that point. Let's have a look now at doing opening up a, a basic sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new sequence, which will become the timeline. I'm going to do a right click away from those subfolders, just into the black area here, and go to new item and go to sequence. It's going to ask me what settings do I want for this sequence. I know that I do want a 1080, so I want a full high def production here. If I know in advance that I want it to be 720, sort of a standard high def or even less a resolution, I've got all of these options. But the general rule these days is to be filming in 1080 and, and uh, editing in 1080. Or what I tend to do these days is I film in 4K and edit down to 1080. It really depends on what you're wanting to produce. But I'd recommend sticking with the 1080 and you should get a good result this way. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Summit Stinger 1 and then click OK. As soon as I've done that, I've now got a sequence on the left hand side. And you notice on the right hand side, my timeline has started to appear. And in my timeline, I've got three different layers of video, video layers, and I've got three different audio layers. You can keep adding more and more layers if you want to add more and more assets and, and features to your video, up to the point of where you can have up to 96 layers of video and 96 layers of audio. You'd need a really big monitor to manage all of that. No one uses 96, not even Marvel Studios use 96 layers. So three or four or five is plenty. If you want to add more straight away, you can do a right click in this black area and go add tracks, add as many tracks as you want. I'll just add another three now. And now I've got an extra three layers of video. It's worth noting a couple of these points. If I turn the eye on and off, it hides that layer. If I press the locking tool, it locks the layer and I can't move it once it's locked. I have to unlock it first before I can make changes. If I go to the audio layers, I can mute a layer so I can't hear that particular layer or I could solo it so I can only hear that particular layer. There's another little button here that allows you to add a voiceover as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in the, the main bit of footage that I'm going to be working with to start with. So I'm going to go across to my footage folder and I'm looking for this bit of footage. If I double click it, I'll get a monitor. If I hit play, hopefully we'll hear this. Hi everyone. My name is Frank from Adobe Express, encouraging you to check out the new Animate from Audio Quick Action. I hope you're really enjoying the 2023 ANZ Adobe Education Summit. Now I could have filmed myself doing that. I could have filmed myself on a green screen doing that, but I didn't want to. I want it to be more animated and more interesting. So I used, I could have used Adobe Character Animator to do it, but I actually used Adobe Express, the new Animate from Audio feature, which is a, one of the new quick actions in the new version of Adobe Express to build and create that. Um, I could have even edited it in Adobe Express as well, but this is a Premiere Pro session, so I'm going to do it in Premiere Pro. Um, I'm going to look for the beginning of it. At the beginning, Frank isn't saying anything. 
until there. So this little playhead, I'm scrubbing forwards and backwards. I'm looking for just when he's about to start to talk. So let's take it back just before the mouth opens up. That's where I want to start this edit. So I'm going to click the eye on the keyboard. And as I click I, I'm getting a little in point. So that's going to be the beginning of my edit. I'm going to scrub forward to the end where he says something like Keeping your education summers. And that's going to be the end of my edit. So I'm now going to click O for the out point. In point, out point have been selected. Now I'm going to go and take my cursor into this screen and click, hold and drag it down into the timeline. And notice that I'm getting video and audio coming in. And it's asking if I want to keep my existing settings. I'm going to keep existing settings to keep it at 1080 and it's still pretty good. If it's not the same settings, like if it was totally blown out uh, or the resolution was just so different, I could do a right click and then look for an option here that says scale to frame size or set to frame size. And that'll get it perfectly framed up into my sequence settings of 1080. Notice that's a really small edit, even though it goes for about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. It's, it's, it's really hard to manage it on such a wide timeline. So we've got this scrolling bar down the bottom that has two handles, one on the left and one on the right. If I grab that handle on the right, I can, I can move it to the left and it zooms in so I can see a lot more detail on my timeline. And here's my play button to play it. Or I could hit the space bar and that'll do the same as playing. And the space bar will also allow me to stop. I can use the J key to go backwards. I can use the L key to go forwards. If I go L, 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 it goes forwards really quickly. If I go J, 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 it goes backwards really quickly. Or I could just manually scrub to the speed that I want to to find the exact point where I want to work. So I'm happy with my first edit. I've got it from the in point to the out point. It's sitting there. And as I listen to this. Hi, everyone. My name is Frank. So he says Frank. And now what I'm wanting to do is bring in a title of the word Frank into my story. So it's exactly at that point where I want the title to appear. So I'm going to go to my tools and I'm going to click the title tool, the T or the text tool. And I'm going to click into my program monitor and just type in the word Frank. As I've typed in Frank, I'll, I'll select it and I'm going to jump up to the top left hand is effect controls and from here I've got all of these amazing tools to use to manipulate the word Frank. <laughs> it, it seems like overkill but it's the important thing is to first of all have a look for the text tool. I'm going to open that up and I can see the word Frank there so I know I'm in the right layer of the right text. Notice that Frank has appeared automatically as a second layer in my timeline and now I can decide on what font I want to work with and I can choose a color. Let's go with a nice bright yellow. I can bring in a, a stroke, I'll click OK to the color. I can bring in a stroke so it really stands out the color. I can even bring in a background if I wanted to. I could bring in a drop shadow. I'm probably going overkill with this, but you can see all the different options. I can uh, reposition through using these tools here, or I can just use my cursor to uh, reposition as well. I'm thinking the word Frank, uh, if I click away, just click my selection tool, it's kind of, I've gone overkill with all my options here. So I'm gonna turn off the background and maybe turn off the stroke and keep the drop shadow. I can fine tune the drop shadow a little bit, increase it, make some changes to it, change the angle a little bit so it stands out a bit more. So now when I hit the play button, my name is Frank. And Frank is about to come in as soon as he says Frank, I want to, here we go. So I've got total control over that. I might make Frank a little bit bigger as well. It's by selecting Frank and then increasing the size. My name is Frank. You can see it comes in exactly at the point where he says Frank, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm thinking at this point that I probably don't want Frank to suddenly just appear. 
maybe I want Frank to fade in. And this is quite simple with Premiere Pro. There's a default transition called the cross dissolve, which is also like a fade in. If I go to the edge of the Frank layer and do a right click right at the edge, I can apply my default transition and it brings in a nice fade. And that fade, if I zoom in on it in the time like I showed you earlier, I can make that dissolve really short. It's Frank. From or I can make that dissolve quite long. It's Frank from Adobe Express. That's the beauty of working with Adobe Premiere Pro. You have total control over just about every element and every frame of your production. It's Frank. So I'm going to look for the asset in my stills folder, which is the Adobe Express logo. And because it's a PNG file, it'll have a transparent background. So I can now, uh, I could set up an in point and an out point, but because it's not in a video, it's a still image, I'm just going to click and drag it, make it onto video layer three. And I want it to appear as soon as he says Express, that's when I want this logo to appear. It's about to say it there, so I'm going to stretch it out. Adobe Express. And I don't want it to appear just there. I want to show you a couple of, of shortcuts. Uh, I want to get, I'm still in my text mode. I don't need any more text at this stage. So the shortcut to get back to your selection tool is the V button on your keyboard. That takes you straight to your selection tool. And now I can uh, reposition and scale and just rework exactly where I want that Adobe Express logo to appear. Adobe Express. Maybe come in a little bit earlier. Adobe Express, encouraging you to check out the new Animate from Audio Quick Act. Animate from Audio Quick Action. That's probably going to be another title. I'm just going to stretch these out because I want them to still be there right to the end of my of my stinger. So it says Animate from Audio. To check out the new Animate. So this is where I want to bring in some more text. Now I could just go ahead and do what I did earlier and grab the text tool and type it all in. Or I could just select the text that I've already got available. Once I've selected it, I'm going to hold the Option key. I'm going to drag it up into Video Layer 3, and then I get a, an exact copy of it as a third layer, and it's sitting on top of the other Frank at the moment. So I'm going to bring it down. You can see the other layer is sitting there. And because it's its own entity now, I can just make changes to it. Let's find out where, he say, where, where Frank says... To check out the new animate from... It's almost perfectly there. I'll just stretch it a little bit over. Animate from audio, so I'm just going to make that change. It's there. And with my selection tool, I'm thinking I might just make this a bit smaller. The new Animate from Audio Quick Action. I hope you're really enjoying the 2023 AM. And I think I've got another asset here that I'm going to bring in, which is the Summit banner. So where he says, really enjoying the 20. So just at that point in time, I'm going to bring in this extra asset into a video layer five, it looks like I'm up to now. Make it a bit smaller, obviously. The 2023 ANZ Adobe Education Summit. And I'll trim that. So trimming is just going to the edge of it, clicking and dragging, or I could make a cut. If I wanted to make a, a direct incision or cut, I could choose this razor blade tool in the middle of the toolbar, or the shortcut for that is the C on the keyboard, and that brings the razor blade tool, and I can just make an incision wherever I want to. Go to my V, which is my selection tool, select what I don't want, then click the delete button, and that gets rid of those extra bits. Hi, everyone. My name is Frank from Adobe Express, encouraging you to check out the new Animate from Audio Quick Action. I hope you're really enjoying the 2023 ANZ Adobe Education Summit. There you go. So Hiya. my stinger is pretty much made. I'm just thinking now I need to add some music to make it really enhance it. So I'm going to go to my audio folder and click on uh, the audio. And hopefully you can hear the music in the background there. Instead of um, doing an in point, I could do an in point and an out point, but I can't drag from the, um, 
from the image or the waveform, I need to drag from this little button just here, which is called the drag audio only. Notice next to it is a drag video only. So you do have the option of if there was video in that, I could drag just the video instead of the audio, or I could drag just the audio and not the video. So I'm going to take the playhead back to the start. I'm going to grab that drag audio only, and I'm going to drag it down to audio layer two. And now the music should be at the same time as the talking. Hi everyone, my name is Frank. Notice that the music's a little bit loud. What I can do now is if I go to take my cursor to this little black spot in between the microphone voiceover button and the actual layer and double click it, it opens up the layer. And this white line is also my volume control, but I don't want it to to start soft, I want it to start with the, with with that first note, first little bit of the guitar, and then I want it to drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool, and I'm going to select, which is also a P by the way on the keyboard. I'm going to select on that white line a little keyframe, and then another one right next to it, and I'm going to drop the volume on that second keyframe so it starts loud, and then goes soft, maybe a little bit not quite as much, not too dramatic. Hi everyone, my name is Frank from Adobe. So the music's not as overpowering now. If I wanted to, I could bring in keyframes any time I wanted to, and I can make this louder and softer. So that's not going to be very helpful now. But From Adobe, it's encouraging you to check out the new Animate from Audio Quick Action. See how you've got total control over every element of the video. So just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to get it all at the same level. And if I wanted to fade this out, of course, I could just fade out like that, adding keyframes. Maybe it'd be good in this case to bring the music up as soon as Frank stopped talking, then fade it out. Education summers. And then I'll do my little cutting tool, my C on the keyboard, make the cut into the music, bring my V, my selection tool, delete that, and I pretty much, that's pretty much working for me, which is pretty cool. Um, just uh, so I can show you a couple of other little features before we finish this part of the tutorial, you know, my, my next session, I'll be going into a little bit more depth, showing you how to do some chroma keying effects and just having a bit more control over your video uh, with Adobe Premiere Pro. Let me bring the banner back in again a second time, but I'm just going to bring it in as its own, or I might just bring it in with a background. Do I have a back? I do. I'm going to open up the background, bring the background in as well. So we've got, I'll keep the music going. This is called non-destructive editing. So you can, you can keep trimming it. Once you've made a cut, it's not a permanent cut. You can always make changes to it. And I'm thinking between the background and or between this part of the edits and this part, I want to put in a transition. I could do a cross dissolve by doing a right click at exactly where they where they join and going apply default transition. And that would bring in a bit of a fade. But that's not quite working for me at the moment. Just here is my two little arrows and looking for my effects tab. And there's a whole range of special effects. We'll look at a few more of these in our next session. But I want you to have a look at the video transition effects. And there's all my different dissolves. And my, some of my favorite ones are under the slide. And there's my push, which is my favorite one. I'm going to drag, click that one, and I'm going to click and drag it so it's fitting in between. So you can start seeing what that's going to do is creating a slide effect, which is a little bit slow. So I'm going to speed it up by making it a bit shorter. And I'm going to apply that same effect to all of the assets that are in my timeline at the moment. So they will all be pushing at pretty much the same time. And I'll do the same with the background as well. And see what this looks like. Education summers. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, it could be better. It might, it might be a bit more fun if we had them going in different directions. So if I click on that push, I can go up to my effect control button, like we used for the text manipulation. And because I've selected that push, I can now change the direction of that push. 
I can make that one go uh, from instead of left to right, go from right to left. I can make this one go from south to north. I can make this one stay where it is. This one can go from north to south and I'll keep the other one like it is. So this time it's going to go in all sorts of different directions. There we go. That looks pretty cool. I'm happy with that. I'll just bring the music up a bit more at that point. Education summons. Let the music fade out. And maybe have it cross dissolve by applying the default transition at the end. So it fades out nicely. So the final thing we need to look at is how to export. And what I recommend in Premiere Pro is you always put an in point at the start of your timeline and an out point at the end of your project. You might find there are some stray clips sitting out here somewhere that you've totally forgotten about because you're so focused on this part, this important part. And if you don't put an out point in, it'll end up exporting all this black until it hits those stray clips. So that's why it's important to have an out point. Now, if you, you can go straight up to the export button at the top left hand corner. That's probably the quickest way of, of getting to the export side of things. Otherwise, you can go to file and there's another way of getting to export as well by going file and export. But once you're in export mode, notice you can export straight to YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, Facebook. But in most cases, you're going to export the file straight into your hard drive as a video file. And then you can later on put it onto social media if you want to. Check the file name, make sure you're happy with it. Check the location, make sure you're happy with it. What I tend to do is I tend to click that location and I create another folder in my project folder called exports because I might want a 720 version. I might want a really low res 480 version that I want to use uh, just to um, share with someone via email. Um, there could be all sorts of different reasons I, I want to have different types of resolutions. So I'll create a folder called export. I'm going to call this one Summit Stinger 1 dash uh, 1080 so that I know that this is the full high def version. Click Save and then I'm going to choose my quality. High quality 1080 is exactly what I'm wanting. My format, can I recommend you always go with H.264? That's going to be able to be read on any media player. And then click the export button. It'll take a few seconds. You can get a little reminder of how long it takes. It's now been exported and I'm going to jump into my project folder and have a look at my exports and just see if it's there. It is sitting there. I'm going to open that up with QuickTime and it's no longer a Premiere Pro project. It's now a fully fledged 1080 video. Hi everyone. My name is Frank from Adobe Express, encouraging you to check out the new Animate from Audio Quick Action. I hope you're really enjoying the 2023 ANZ Adobe Education Summit. Well, there you go. So hopefully you've enjoyed that little tutorial on Premiere Pro. Don't forget we are going to be doing the second part to this in November. Look, if you ever need extra support and want to learn more about any of the amazing applications found within the Adobe Creative Cloud, such as Premiere Pro, you can always go to the Adobe Help Center. Yeah, the Adobe Help Center is a one-stop shop for help and support for any of the Adobe applications, and it's available via helpx.adobe.com. Let me show you how you can access it. So you just type in helpx.adobe.com into the address bar of your favorite browser and it will come up with this screen. From here, what you can do is you can select this yellow box that says learn how to use your apps. Let that load. And what you'll see is that there is a bar where you can pick the tool that you'd like some help with. Of course, today we've spoken about Premiere Pro, so I'm going to select Premiere Pro. Wait for that to load and see all of these different options and, you know, uh, frequently asked questions that I can follow the links for. But I can also find some Premiere Pro tutorials. So if today hasn't been quite enough for you, of course, come to the next session, but also check out these tutorials. You can view more tutorials by selecting that there. And then, of course, you'll come into this page, which gives you even more information.
you can start with the beginner tutorials and then move into the experienced ones. Excellent. Thank you, Abby. Look, we hope you've enjoyed this Adobe Pro Tip session on Adobe Premiere Pro. See you next time. Bye. We do hope you enjoyed this Adobe Pro Tips for Students lesson and learned some new skills that you can apply in all sorts of areas of learning, future work and fun. Thanks again for being involved and don't forget to keep being creative. Thank you.